obliged only to myself. The first question in the Bible is, did God really say? Genesis 3 verse 1, the speaker was a snake questioning Eve's obligation to follow God's command. Oh, just a little command about not eating fruit from one particular tree. The snake assures Eve it all will be okay. Not bad, as God implies. Eve falls, the temptation and the rest is history. Or the rest is the invasion of sin, defined in the Oxford English Dictionary as an action or behaviour that transgresses divine law. Eve's action, also copied by Adam, is to disbelieve God and to assert their right to decide what is good for them, to put themselves on a par with God on knowing good and evil. They, not God, are the determinants of good actions and bad actions. I was reminded of this on reading of a letter answered by the New York Times agony aunt columnist. The woman's letter inquired about her obligation to stay with her long-standing husband, now that he had dementia, the spark had left their relationship and she didn't fancy the role of caregiver. The basic reply was, we have no personal obligation to anyone else beyond some form of enlightened selfishness. The actual words were, the traditional Christian marriage vow was to stay together in sickness and in health. The possibility of divorce shifts the meaning of that promise. It becomes more of an ethical commitment than a contractual obligation the special obligations we have to our loved ones are rooted in the value we place on our relationships with them, with all the resilience and fragility of those relationships. End quote. One UK commentator explained where that left us. Obligations are only what we feel like being obliged by. This has always been a realistic way of looking at the world, presented here as the summit of human ethical achievement. Obliged only to myself. It's one way to do life. But where is the care for others, the sacrifice for the greater good? The Bible's second question is from God to Adam and Eve. Where are you? Genesis 3 verse 9. The trouble with putting ourselves above God's ways and determining our obligation to them is to find ourselves separating from our Heavenly Father. God's response is not to be obliged only to himself, God loves you so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Our response to our creator is to acknowledge God did really say, and work out how then should we live that is not obliged only to ourselves.